Hello and welcome to BB Book Buzz, the program where your Wakefield librarians gather to talk about the books that we have inspired us recently and to share them with you in hopes that you can find your next great read. My name is Karen Stern and I'm from the reference desk at the library and I'm here today with Jacqueline Powers who is our assistant director and our head of reference Jeff Klapes and we're all excited to bring you yet another exciting edition <laughs> <laughs> of, and for a variety and, and fun in books today. Um, and I'm actually going to start today with something slightly different from usual. I'm not going to be just talking about one book. I'm going to be talking about a whole You have a whole a pile. Whole, a whole pile. Look at this <laughs> pile, yes. Um, I'm not going to talk them all. I'm just, we're talking today about short stories. And the reason we're doing that is kind of threefold. Um, First of all, I, I picked up this little book off the shelf because just it's called Rivers by Martin Michael Driessen, an, a Dutch author. And I was drawn to it because it's called Rivers, and I always am drawn to anything to do with water. And I pulled it off the shelf, and I started reading, and then I realized it was short stories. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then my husband and I were looking for a movie to watch, and we picked up... Um, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, oh, yeah. which That's is... It's been getting a lot of buzz. It's been getting a lot of buzz. It's, this is the movie poster, or one of them anyway. It's the new Coen Brothers um, movie. It's, on, it's only streaming on Netflix, Netflix right now. It's not, um, it's not released on DVD <coughs> yet, if ever. Um, but as we were watching it, and you can see this looks a little bit like a book cover, like an old-fashioned mm. kind of... Leather-bound. Leather-bound, yeah. and yeah. Um, the, it literally, they turn the pages in like one of those old fashioned, almost children's stories, mm. only this yeah. is all, it's all westerns and it's a series of related stories and they do it really beautifully. They turn the pages and you get these old fashioned color plates that are like, um, you know, they're beautifully drawn. I think they are actual drawings with the, with the caption at the bottom that gives you a little hint of what's to come. And it, a lot of times it's the last line in the, in the particular story and it sort of teases you into the story. Yeah. So. There was another set of short, short stories. They um, say the cinematography in that is supposed oh, to be amazing. Is it? It's does incredible. Does it connect with the book in any way? Like, did you feel, kind of feel that in the book itself? The which book? This one. The no. Oh, the, don't the, you have the? There's no Buster Scruggs. Oh, there book. is. Oh, oh okay, no. Never mind. Well, so this is so the interesting thing. you're just drawing thing. a comparison the between com the, the, the 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 idea. The idea came to me that. Short stories seem to be everywhere yeah. at the moment, including I in the movies. I thought that was actually connected to no, the No, it's these are stories. Their stories are stories that they have actually um, kind of been telling themselves through their whole careers, and they've always had these ones in the back of their minds that they wanted to film them at some point, but they never knew how. So I think they put a bunch of them together. They like the Western mm -hmm. genre. They yeah, always they, they always, always have. <laughs> um, and they put a bunch of them together, and then they um, I think they wrote the last one maybe. But anyway, so mm. it's, you know, they're all linked by theme, um, you know, the themes of typical Coen Brothers themes, as are these stories linked by themes. And um, so, so I sort of started thinking, well, maybe I'll just talk about short stories in general, because, because the whole thing is they're everywhere at the moment. I mean, mm. I order fiction for the, for the library, and um, you, you can't move. It, for it does sh seem yeah, there's like a huge blossoming of... Every of author has their, like, short story moment mm -hmm. and they all they they who was um he wrote he was a, he's a local author he wrote the um the leftovers tom parada tom mm, parada yeah. he wrote yeah. a couple like i want to say two two years ago he wrote a collection yep. of short, short stories another popular author just did too like people yeah. who don't typically do it seem to be coming out with their sort well, of well i think a couple collection. of months ago i talked about lauren groff's Lauren Gross, collection yes. of Florida yes. stories, of Florida, which because right. she's so known there you go. for her novels. They're just everywhere, and, and there's a the lot of new authors, amazing. really interesting authors from all over the world who are coming out with them. So they're kind of, you know, short is the new long, it's, mm. it's everywhere. Mm. And so I just thought, you know, but at the same time, I think a lot of people kind of aren't sure about what to do with a short story. Um, I, I don't really know why this is why it's so exciting right now, why it's blossoming like it is. Is it a detention um, span? <laughs> we, I was wondering, is, is it the sound, bite, the sound bite age? Is it because we have no attention span? Um, is it because we're all too busy to do anything else? But I think it's also that, the, that authors are kind of rediscovering the beauty of the short form. And mm. so I kind of just wanted to talk a little bit about what's possible and like why, do, if you, do you guys like short stories? Why do you read short stories? It kind of depends. I mean, it I always depends, like... Yeah. Um, I often read short stories of an author that I already have some familiarity with right. mm. to see how they do things differently. Right. And then there are people like, um, 
I've kind of fallen away from Stephen King in recent years, but I used to love Stephen King, um, right. his, his early stuff. And he's always been a real master of, of short stories. He has a whole bunch of collections. But even his novels, his incredibly long novels, are often almost like a bunch of stories right. connected to each other. other. Right, right. Um, and it's, that's interesting. And some authors do that really well and um, this, better than others. Well, and I think for some authors, I was reading the preface to this, the new um, N.K. Jemisin, which is called How, called How Long Till Black Future Month. And she's a sci science fiction, f speculative fiction writer um, who you know for her long form stuff. But she said that you know this, this was like a way for her to learn how to write, mm. to learn how to really distill a character and get a story tight and or you know her world mm. world building is so fantastic and she learned a lot of that mm. through writing st short stories um i think we also we as humans we just have a very i mean think about it when you you know your mom and your dad or your dad read to you before you went to to bed at night you know mm. it's that's a short story right? right that's you know and and how kind of delicious that thing that is that sitting there and listening mm. to someone tell you a story and it's in this little discreet package or sitting around the campfire and telling ghost stories and and if you think about it even oral you know there's a lot of there's a big thing of storytelling mm. oral storytelling right now like if you think of the moth story hour story core mm. um, story core people there's something in us that mm. it's very ancient i think some like you know love for these little things and yet and yeah, I mean, people I, are sort of afraid of them, or they don't quite know how to approach them. I or feel like there's this this idea that when there's a whole bunch of them, like you're picking up the book, thinking, okay, I want I want to drown myself in this book. Like I have mm. a whole weekend to read, and I think that when you're thinking about short stories, you don't think about being immersed in that way mm -hmm. because it's it's choppy. Right, you're thinking. Mm. You're thinking it's so, going so to be, but it's not necessarily. I don't think it's a lot well of them done. have a theme well, that ties them that together. Ties, right. and here's my answer to that. My I think of it like listening to a, your favorite album. Okay, mm -hmm. whether it's mm. like Beatles or Beyonce or anybody in between. It's you know, or or even like a piece of classical music, a symphony or something. Mm -hmm. It's made up of parts. Yes, but it's meant to be taken in as, as, a, as, whole. as a whole. Right. And that if you if you think of a short story. Um, and the nice thing a bit is that you can stop along the way. <laughs> so if you're really busy, or right. you have a yeah. short attention span, or you just need to escape for half an hour, you can mm. dip into it. So I think I think it's worth trying. And um, and I want to just talk a little bit about the different kinds of things that are out there. So I talked about rivers, and the reason it's called rivers is because the theme is rivers. rivers <laughs> amazingly, <laughs> um, and it's about how they um, well. It's just it, it it uses rivers as a kind of a means to take you through a story and to draw out connections between people and and they're very different stories which I can I might talk about a little bit more but I won't go into now so but so you get these ones that are arranged around a theme um, this is another new one called All That Is Left Is All That Matters by Mark Sluka um, and this the theme here is they're kind of a lot of stories that I think there are about fifteen stories here. Um, that explore kind of a loss of, of especially our, our youth, um, but that ultimately are, are very life-affirming and uplifting in, in lots of ways. So it's a slightly melancholy theme in some ways because you're thinking, it's sort of wistful and thinking about the past. But, but each one of them, and you think 15 stories in this little slim volume, I mean, mm -hmm. these are pretty short, um, but it's getting really good reviews. Um, and another one, Baby, You're Going to Be Mine by Kevin Wilson. The theme here is kind of family values or what makes a family. It's kind of offbeat, quirky, dark a little bit. Um, very complex emotional relationships are, are ex oh, but He wrote um, The Family Fang. He wrote The Family Fang. Oh. Yeah. That was an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a little mm -hmm. bizarre. Um, but in the end, also, although it's kind of dark, kind of bizarre in some ways, compassionate and um, mm -hmm. you know so again there's an idea of the sort of themes they can also be arranged around place there's a whole series of these noirs so if you're a fan of I don't know Dashiell Hammett or mm -hmm. whoever it is um, if you like the noir um, uh, genre 
the, the, these are all set obviously in Baghdad. So there's a there's a theme of place and mystery and detective-y stuff. But you can go to Cape Cod Noir as well, or the very first one in the series was Brooklyn Noir. And I, you were saying there I, was a Paris Noir. There, I think Paris. there's a Paris one. I, so so it could be arranged around place. Um, many of them are arranged around genre, obviously. So this one is New Voices in Fantasy, which has just come out. Um, and this one, kind of like Buster Scruggs, is all Westerns. Mm. Um, you can get ones that are humor. Um, if, you, if you're looking for light little bites to just move you along to the next errand that you have to do, um, you can, obviously there's tons of mystery ones. I mean, if you're a mystery lover, mm -hmm. short stories are a great way to go. And then, if you're not sure what you like, you could try an anthology, which oh, is every year we get the best American short stories, and this one's this year's. Um, every year there's a different editor. This year's is, is Roxane Gay, who's very um, of the moment, and they pick whatever they see in the in the previous year as being you know their favorites. And so every year it'll be a slightly different atmosphere because of because of the editor who picked them. So this is a great way to introduce yourself to a new author without having to read a whole book, mm -hmm. for instance. So you might do, like what you were saying earlier, is, is dip, the opposite way of what you were saying earlier, is find a new author and go to their long fiction mm -hmm. from here. So those are some of the possibilities with short stories. And does anybody have a favorite short? I've always liked Jumpa Lahiri. Jumpa Lahiri is one of my favorites, mm. too. I like her. I like her short stories. I've read everything she's written, and I, I think I like the short stories better than her novels. I agree. Just, I agree. She's very good at keeping that story tight, and but, uh, you know, e each one, you still feel like you know the people, and the themes care. It's, all, mm. it's always kind of immigrant, Indian immigrant related. Right. Um, but they're often Some very the, local. The first one is set in Boston. In Bo Cam Boston, Cambridge, yeah. They're, well, yeah, they're, the they're Boston local. area, definitely. Yeah, yeah it's, that's the interpreter of maladies, right? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's, a, that's, that's one of the things about, um, about them is that they are, you know, they, they develop characters. They bring so well, so, so well. And, and they pack a real punch in just a few words. And that's what I think is amazing about mm. them. But anyway, we should probably move on from short stories now <laughs> because we are... Um, Jackie, do you want to go next? Didn't you have something similar to short stories? Well, actually, yeah, uh, yeah, I can. Um, oh, <laughs> I can talk about uh, Melmoth because actually, the, the more we were just talking about that, it suddenly occurred to me that there are some similarities to this. This is um, uh, Sarah Perry's Melmoth, which just came out this year. She's really well known for her breakout second novel, which came out about a year ago, called The Essex Serpent, which I think we've talked about. We've all read it, and I think we talked about it. Oh, in yeah. A, it's one a, of, it was one of my favorites of 2018. It was a really sure. great book. Um, um, sort of a historical and a mystery, but not quite a mystery. And it was, yeah. yeah. And this one, um, this is new, and if you like The Essex Serpent, um, I think you would really enjoy this because the writing style is very similar. Um, she's got very beautiful lyrical writing. I think even... Um, we won't be able to find it. It is winter in Prague, night is rising in the mother of cities over her thousand spires. Look down in the darkness around your feet in all the lanes and alleys if it were a soft black dust swept there by a broom. And goes on mm -hmm. and on. And she, she really does, she does um, visual descriptions very well. Um, the, the premise behind this book, and it is a little bit supernatural, but not enough that it would bother anyone who says, oh, I don't read that stuff. Right. Um, it's, uh, you could almost say it's more closer to um, magical realism. Mm. Um, it's the kind of gothic story that you can never tell whether the ghost is real or in someone's head. Mm -hmm. um, so, That's the best kind. Yeah, it is, <laughs> and because it is very psychological. The characters are very strong. Um, the, the idea behind it is the, the main character is Helen Franklin, who is British, and she's working as a translator in Prague. And she, she's a very reserved kind of person who has um, you can tell as as you get into it that there's some issues in her past, which you find out about later. Um, and she meets a researcher who hands her some documents mm. um, that he has clearly had difficulty dealing with because of the content and how they've affected his life. And it's all about the character of Melmoth, which is totally fictional. It's it's a folk tale. Um, it 
actually comes from a book, a real book that was written in, I want to say like 1820 or 30, um, kind of long lost, forgotten Gothic kind of book that's about a guy who sells his soul to the mm -hmm. devil for, um, or to, to this demon so for everlasting life. She has a twist on it. Um, her Melmoth is um, after Christ died and the women went to the, the tomb uh, on the third day and saw that the tomb was open. Um, in her folktale, Melmoth is the one of the women who doesn't believe what actually happened. Right. And as a result, she is damned to mm. kind of um, wander eternally um, looking for other disbelievers and other lonely people who are outcasts and stuff. So it's a kind of creepy concept. And of course, as a demon, she appears in people's in lives, in the characters' lives, but not really, and you're never quite sure what that dark thing was or that noise. The reason, going back to how I started, was um, how it, it is similar to a collection of short stories, is it's actually, it takes place over a wide period of time and oh, like all over the world. Mm. Um, there's, oh, some okay. of it is the documents, so like all of a sudden you take a side trip to um, uh, the Philippines 20 years ago right. because there's a series of documents mm. that re relate to that and then you're reading historical documents about the Holocaust um, in Prague and then you're reading about um, uh, there was a point where one of the characters is in Cairo right. 50 years ago like and in, this is because she's researching all these she's researching documents all of these documents to, put together to try the and mystery. piece together this mystery mm. is it true mm. and or are they crazy? What's actually real going on here? Wow. And, and of course, she starts to like like any good gothic story like this. She starts to feel it affecting it. her. Yeah. She's right. living it. So um, this is but if it's kind of nice because it's it's broken up into these um, all of these different parts could almost stand as little novels on their own. Okay. Mm. Because they're so disparate and take place in different time periods and are written in different voices. Yet which, tied together. That are this, tied together the by this common yeah. theme. So I, I, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, if, if you don't like supernatural stories, it really isn't enough I, of that. It isn't enough of that. that it's, it's, it's a wonderful read alike for people who enjoyed things like um, uh, A.S. Byatt's um, Possession. Possession. Yeah. I was going to say, great. it reminds me of like Hex meets Possession. Sort yes, of. actually, yeah. Because <laughs> Hex is another one like that, that you did recently by the... It's doctor. nowhere near as <laughs> spooky. spooky as that. <laughs> right, right. Um, it's, it's more... Um, the 13th Tale. The, the 13th Tale. The it's, it's the, the literary mystery where right. you're using documents possession. to try yeah. and yeah. piece possession. together yeah. the story. Um, the Historian, yeah, also yeah. would be an excellent one. So I think if you like that kind of um, wandering the world, to trying to find the pieces that tell right. the truth of what actually happened. I think it's great. And her writing, her writing is just it's, beautiful. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, awesome. Mine is nothing like a short story. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not totally dark different or in turn. It's completely yeah, yeah. different. Tone, I mean, sorry. Um, yes, so this was Dear Mrs. Bird mm -hmm. by A.J. Pierce. Um, it is London during the Blitz. And she is in her early 20s. Um, Emmeline, Emmeline Lake, they call her Emmy. Um, it's delightful. She's delightful. The, she, she essentially wants to be a war correspondent and thinks she's applying for a job as a, um, like a, like an entry level job at a, at a newspaper. Turns out she gets a job as a typist for a women's magazine. And it's, she's like, well, you know, it's in the same building as the, this newspaper that she wants to, right. wants to write for. So she says, well, I'll see, you know, how, I'll keep the job and see how far I can get me or whatever. And uh, ends up, I don't want to say accidentally, but ends up sort of serving as the, um, the advice columnist uh, in secret. And because she doesn't like the way the existing advice columnist, Mrs. Bird, uh, responds to people's or doesn't respond to people's oh, inquiries. So, Mrs. so she is not Mrs. Bird. Okay. She is not, not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> but opposing. it's, it's very. The tone is all surprisingly light, despite the fact that there's bombs going off every night and it's all terrible. Um, it's very Major Pettigrew's Last Stand. It's the right. Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Like it's, it's. Mrs. Queen takes the train. Mrs. Queen takes the train. Yeah. It's, it's. 
charming and British. Mm. Unbelievably <laughs> British. I mean, British to like, it, it could not be more British. I mean, they're just, you know, making jam out of carrots with their stiff upper lip and it's just, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> it's, the, you know, talking about the hounds and going hunting and, so, you know, drinking their tea, you know, just putting on their tin hats, right? You know, while the bombs are going off and just moving on. Yeah. Um, it's entirely predictable. I mean, there's no, you're, you're from the go, you're like, okay, <laughs> you know, I, I can see how this is going to unfold. I can see, you know, there's obviously going to be a sad part and then there's going to be, you know, so she's going to get in trouble and then it'll all be like, you, you know where it's going from, from the get go. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's still a nice. But she takes you through nice. She things. takes you through What's nice. What's the writing like? Um, it's it's first person, so it's told from her from Emmy's perspective, mm -hmm. and it's it's just light. Light is the kind of right. You mm. know, light yeah. and charming, and you know her thoughts, and it's nothing to despite. I don't, I don't know how they do this. I feel like the British have a special skill for like taking these really horrible times and just being like, wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> turned out fine. Absolutely. Happen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <right? laughs> you know, and there, yeah, yeah, she very much downplays all of the, she, she also volunteers at the fire station. Mm -hmm. And so the fire, um, firemen are going out every night, you know, putting out the fires from the, the bombs and stuff. And they're all, they're all just like, well, and then I took a tea break, and the right. phones were still mm -hmm. ringing, so I came back in, and then the fire station got hit. So, you know. I love the really <laughs> understated British sense of humor. It's very it understated. Like yes. Yep. It's very understated. Has the author written Muffin other make stuff? A I want to say this is her first. Yes, her first novel. Yeah, I haven't heard of it. No, nope, this is her first, and it was. I thought it was good. It was. I would read something else. Good. Any other, any read-alikes? Well, you, oh, you did say all those, yeah, all those, 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 all all those British, yeah. the if British. If it's charming and it's British, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did say that. Great. Um, Jeff, do you want to talk? You read, an, you read a sort Act, of unusual yeah, brand, well, brand actually, new. Yeah, well, initially, I was thinking it's a good segue because it's noir. And you were talking right. about, I mean, just, <laughs> yes. it's, it has, it's, it's not connected to the short story idea that you were talking about, but it's, very noir. In fact, that's what it's called, The Long Take, A Noir Narrative um, by yeah. Robin Robertson. You probably know very little about this book because it hasn't been getting too much press here, but it was one of the um, shortlisted books for the Booker Prize, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and it lost out to The Milkman, mm -hmm. um, which is being published here soon, very soon, like sometime, in, sometime this month, which I haven't read yet, but I, I always like to make a point of reading some of the nominees because they're always interesting if yeah. uh, if nothing and else. And this one is certainly that. And this is very, um, in fact, we, we were talking about this before we came um, this afternoon about how I would, how would I describe this? And um, the the very first thing they say in the blurb is that it's unclassifiable. <laughs> and I would don't agree. Even it's, don't even try. But I mean, um, the title gives something. The long take, it's, 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 it's very cinematic, it's right? It is very cinematic. It's as if you were... The, the, what it is, it, it's essentially a story of, um, of a veteran. It's a D-Day veteran. It takes place during the height of the kind of noir period. Um, most of it takes place in Los Angeles. It's a little bit of New York, a lot of LA, and a little bit of San Francisco. And it's about um, a character named Walker. I think that's all you ever know of him um, by name. And he is originally from a very small fishing village in Nova Scotia. Um, the author actually is Scottish, mm. um, so it's interesting because it's a mix of the, the the both the author and the character's experience as an outsider looking at a heyday of America, um, but also seeing seeing it as an outsider. Sure. Um, so Walker um, grew up in this tiny little village um, in Nova Scotia, and there are periodic flashbacks in the book to little snippets of um, his experiences there and a woman that he was in love with when he was young. Um, and then he goes to um, World War II and he's in, involved in the D-Day invasion. So an awful lot of the book also is flashbacks of him being taken back to extremely vivid um, and very specific um, instances of the war. They can be very disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, because you can tell there's a real personal 
a sense of what it is like to be in battle right. and the things that he saw and how things in his modern life in, in America trigger those um, trigger mm. those flashbacks. The, the thing that makes the book kind of um, unclassifiable, I thought of it a little bit as a graphic novel without the graphics because um, it's not really written in a narrative form. There's a lot of very short, um, brief almost stanzas. Stanzas, like poetry. Yeah, right. It's um, the writing is gorgeous. The descriptions are beautiful. His language is amazing, but it doesn't get in the way of. You, you would think that this would be very choppy to read, um, and it's not. It flows beautifully. Um, I found myself reading it in exactly the same way I would any other narrative writing. Hmm. And you um, said it was quick too. It it's a very quick read because of that. Um, there's so many short little snippets. Right. It reminded me at least a little bit in in format, if not in anything else, of Lincoln and the Bardo, right. which right. is right. also kind of That's an experimental format. Yeah. Um, so I think there are some people who might be really put off by this in the same right. way that they might be put off by um, a short story. but. It really is not, it, it's not difficult at all. Um, I'm going to read one sentence that actually made me stop and read it over again because I just loved it so much. Um, this is a flashback, um, uh, just a very brief flashback to Nova Scotia mm -hmm. when he's in the middle of another um, circumstance. He's, he has this brief memory. Cadent rain through paper birch, the days sliding through each other, the search for some way to make a mark, some kind of legible life. Nice. And mm, that that's, is poetry. That, that's yeah. poetry, and most of the book is like that. And ironically, the character um, becomes, when he goes to Los Angeles, he becomes a crime reporter. So he's, um, he's observing America in this noir period through, right. um, in Los Angeles while they're filming popular noir movies. Everywhere. Noir, noir everywhere. everywhere. And he's living it. And he's living it. And <laughs> He's um, writing about homelessness and poverty in, in the city desk department of like right. what's really going on in the city. Mm -hmm. And the title, I think, is, is important. The, the long take refers to exactly that kind of cinematic thing where you have a, a very long take in a, in a movie where the action goes on and is filmed for an extraordinary length of time. And that's kind of what his life is. Right. is it's his his childhood life, his war life, and his modern life are all kind of wound up in this thing that they seem different, but they're all one big long take. One big long take, um, and it flows like one big and long And it flows, mm. yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful book, beautiful book, and very different from a lot of the other stuff that you might see out there. Great. I think that's one for my yeah. list, for sure. Um, we have very little time, but I just wanted to put out there to everybody that the new Louise Penny, who mm -hmm. has been mentioned many mm -hmm. times on this show, <laughs> is out. Um, and, oh my goodness, I just forgotten the title. What's the title? Um, Kingdom, Kingdom of, of the, the Blind. Kingdom of the Blind. So it's sitting on my nightstand waiting for me to finish the last hundred pages. I think it's sitting on all of our, at least our, 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 our hold mental list. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, our mental nightstands. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, come, come out to the library. There's, there are copies of those on the buzz table for everybody to pick up. Uh, well, look out for copies on the bus pay table because they will be going fast. Um, I'm finishing mine tomorrow, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you can come in. And you get can this. come in and take mine. <laughs> all right, and I think that's probably about all we have time for today. Um, thank you very much for joining us. As always, we will be back in two months um, with our big fireside episode, which is going to have a much bigger cast sitting <laughs> here with you. Um, at least one more person, <laughs> and uh, we'll be talking about our favorites of the year past. Um, so we'll see you next time on BB Book Buzz. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.